the purpose of the simulators is that through the overall comparison they provide all of that which is created through the agreement ideas of the consciousness that effect simulation allows then the recognition of the isness true reality that our real awareness that which we actually are and animates through the consciousness vehicles is a part of for the isness is the everything complete and absolute reality and to recognize such rather requires something that isn't this everything isness that serves as the comparison which is where the simulators come in with the ideas created that effect then encapsulated realities that are not this everything isness and so as the real awareness maintains its isness nowness state of a being as it goes through the body forms from insect to animal etc it is required that a personal self be established or this real awareness nowness state would be maintained even in creation and through the body forms and no closer would the real awareness be to recognizing the ears that it is a part of for the real awareness just is it doesn't add anything else to the absolute everything reality it is and a part of for indeed what can be added to an absolute and complete everything reality but the ears always expresses its singular drive that of the continued recognition of the endlessness of itself and this gives rise then to the means by which this can be done the formulation of simulators where can be encased parts of itself real awareness units that through the recognizing of the ears from the creational comparison as these real awareness units are a part of this isness so the recognition of the real awareness parts become the greater recognition of the whole the ears recognizes itself more so and this a constantly expressed singular real purpose of the ears then facilitates the creation of a personal self as a body form is eventually assumed where the faculties of the created self the mind are utilized and rather than just then maintaining this nowness real awareness position as the faculties of the vehicles are free will activated as anything created must render effects that draw one from the nowness real awareness position so this results effectively in two selves the real awareness a true self and a created personal self for the free will activation of the vehicles encapsulated then effected 
simulation, a reality that then cannot be the everything isness of the real awareness nowness position. But as everything is awareness, this awareness must be through not only the isness everything, but through anything created, anything simulated. And yet, what is simulated and created is a reality aside from the isness everything. And so this brings forth a second self, a personal self, a created self that always is a present, as this nowness of the real awareness is moved from, through free will, self-decided activation of ideas through the body vehicles. This then is really the comparison, the personal self as it creates its ideas and sits in the encapsulated illusions of them and the real awareness, a real awareness which is this everything, is this reality. And as we move between these two positions, the personal created self with its thoughts, emotions and imagination and the real awareness absent of any created idea and yet the everything is this reality position, we can begin to recognise the difference and eventually recognise the is through the real awareness. The real awareness being the only position where the is can be recognised as the real awareness is the isness and the personal self is only designed to create and perceive simulation. Just like the sun shining, the sun as the best is representation. We can compare any idea created, any thought, emotion, consideration, conviction, assumption and attitude with the sun, and we can realise how no idea exists there, and yet the sun represents an everything, that as we add something, as we create, we remove ourselves from this everything position and experience the affected, encapsulated something, and so the creation of the personal self is rather essential for this additional self that as we move into through vehicle idea activation we remove ourselves from the isness nowness real awareness position and therein lies the comparison the experiences then in a creation and on the real side are rather incidental and are whatever they might be, whatever we have decided to experience. And regardless of the nature of the experience, all are as references for ears recognitional purposes. Of course then, individuals rather become lost in their free will created illusions, and as they remain in a mode of constant idea activation, so they remain as the personal self and maintain a position other than their real awareness, 
nowness to a state. And over lifetimes, so this a personal self a created position becomes over established. The real awareness, nowness position forgotten, and individuals are then lost in creation, and creating whatever they are deciding and agreeing with, until such a moment comes when the real awareness, always as an expression of this isness nature, that of self recognition, will know when the moment is right, that its disconnected personal self has had perhaps enough experience and will nudge and try and get its attention. As the personal self must make the decision for this process of awareness to begin, to decide to want to recognise the ease, to align itself with this real intent, the real intent which is the isness continuously recognising itself, expressing through all real awareness as the drive to recognise the ears, all real awareness is a part of. For as the personal self has been created, as it self decides its experience, this free will must now be utilised for this real intent and is recognitional objective. And if it isn't, then it continues to generate experience in a creation according to its wants. The personal self was created for this recognitional comparison purpose, but now it must serve the function for why it was created. For the real awareness always is that which is its singular drive, that of is recognition, but the personal self is a part of it, an extension of it, a tool, yes, but one by which, unless it agrees and aligns itself with this real intent, this process of is recognition can't begin or ever be achieved. For to recognise the ears, we must 100% intend to do so. The real awareness will be 100% as its very nature is ears recognition, but the awareness is rather divided into two selves, and anything less than a hundred percent or so with the personal self in regards to is recognition. And this presents then as a situation where this cannot be achieved. For anything less than a hundred percent with the personal self would represent ideas attached to and agreements maintained, and any idea that can't be released must be experienced in the simulators, the only place where encapsulated parts of the everything isness can be experienced. And so, through the lifetimes, the consciousness has been created based on all these ideas, these agreements and attachments the personal self has decided upon. And when the moment comes when the personal self does decide to begin the journey of ears recognition, so all these agreements 
all these attachments. These tap lines must be revealed. We go through a process where we are made fully conscious and aware of everything the consciousness comprises of. For anything we are unconscious of, we remain the constant effects of. Every idea must be laid bare, and considering the bulk of these ideas are subconscious, those that were decided on through all lifetimes other than our current one, as the personal self can only be aware of its current lifetime of experiences, as each lifetime brings with it a new body vehicle and memory body devoid of everything that had transpired prior, this huge subconscious storehouse of idea agreements, although that which we are unconscious of still are as ideas that bind us to a creation, until they are brought to light and released also. And then a completing of awareness would be us standing in complete conscious awareness of everything our consciousness comprises of, and from there we must make the decision to release all these ideas. For one single idea, if maintained, will hold you to a creation, as you have effectively decided to continually then experience it. And so, certain ideas will be harder for the personal self to release than others, especially if there is an emotional component to it, as the personal self does like its sensations, its thrills, to experience the intensity of created emotional responses through its astral vehicle. Fear also can be a very strong emotional binding component that presents resistance through the personal self to releasing certain agreements, especially to a controller and dark force ideas, as very often is the subconscious fear of repercussion when it comes to letting go of ideas that stem from those we have extended agreement to that have controlled us for eons of lifetimes, as a generally in the selection to the controllers carries a heavy price, and these ramifications will be retained in the subconscious, and although we are unconscious of them, they will very much motivate our behaviour in what we do and don't do, and our willingness to walk away and redact agreement from the controlling systems. Sometimes, in real side experiences, we can have situations where what we are confronted with is an overall representation of something and not something specific. And from the surface visuals alone, the personal self would draw its conclusions and make its assumptions, but always the real awareness that is a part of all awareness that is then through all created consciousness and all that which is simulated, effected from it, can determine the representation, can determine the ideas, 
behind what is visually presented. For ultimately, if we complete our awareness, if we have been made conscious and aware of everything the consciousness comprises of, and if we also have faced all of creation, as our consciousness is intertwined and a part of all consciousness that affects overall the simulator, and so we all are part of the overall simulator situation, and must then face creation in its entirety, then everything of the overall consciousness will have to, at one point or another, feature in real side experiences, as we go about our process. Although not everything will the personal self be shown, or indeed remember. Always on the real side, we rather endeavour to just be in the nowness of the real awareness, and the personal self is shown whatever makes the most sense for it to see in any given moment, and the recognition of what's taking place really can only be so through a real awareness that can determine what's taking place beyond just the surface literal visuals. A real awareness that can read everything through all consciousness affected simulation, including that which is created by the real guides, for our awareness benefit. And so it follows that if there is something we can't recognise or fathom out, this must be due to the personal self, that through the ideas of its consciousness we still are clinging to, that we haven't yet addressed and released. This represents a detraction from the complete input of real awareness impressions, that absent of anything agreed and clung to of the consciousness, we would have a clear and undiluted stream of impression input that allows recognition of everything that is presented creationally. Every idea that makes up every simulated effect. For if we stand absolute in the real awareness, with nothing of the personal self-consciousness clung to, we must have a complete and clear channel of the everything reality of the real awareness. And although it may as yet not recognise the ears, it will recognise everything creationally occurring. And the process of awareness is ongoing and continuous. Always there is more to see and recognise. And we only stop when we decide to do so, and then we are aware of whatever we are at that moment. So the guides do like to stretch us, that as they present certain experiences, we must more so stand in our real awareness, and more so release the limiting personal self-consciousness idea taplines that detract from a complete recognition of everything that's taking place. And so it can become so with experiences that on occasion very little seems to be taking place, 
or that something visually presented can have far greater excesses of meaning and representation than what it may have represented months or years ago. For generally, buildings represent ideas, they can represent consciousness, which are conglomerations of ideas, but we ought not get too comfortable with established representation, as sometimes we can have buildings presented which represent other things entirely, as though the guides were throwing us a curveball to stretch our recognitional prowess, that we don't become over-assuming as to representation of real side features through the personal self, and always maintain the real awareness, nowness position for idea representing a discernment, to see what else we can recognise and be aware of, other than that which we already are. And as I said, some real side features can be representing something overall. Like on a real side experience I shared, where this one building represented the overall agreement to the controllers through the consciousness, and this recognition could never have been determined through the personal self alone with what looked like a single building, or even if we may have drawn conclusions and made assumptions based on what we already know regarding building representation. But being open to what else there is to recognise and be aware of, of maintaining this real awareness and nowness where impressions can always be afforded, so would what this building represented become known. Similarly, in this real side experience, more recently, was I also presented with a building, a very vast and complex structure full of individuals. On the surface, it looked like a huge overall shopping mall, with the expected customers, shoppers and shop workers. What it represented through my real awareness impressions was a complexity of an overall agreement idea tapline, which was so convoluted, added to, and intermeshed through my consciousness over many, many lifetimes, that it was a major overall part of agreement and attachments of my consciousness that was on the verge of being released. For agreements will grow, they will be added to, other agreements become attached, including emotional attachments and the inclusion of other individuals into the mix, etc. A single idea agreement can grow into a multi-faceted, many-branched agreement that the individual branches that stem from it can be addressed and the ideas they represent released, but the mighty tree that all the branches stem from, and indeed the roots, the root initial idea remains. And so, as we go through our process of facing the self 
and creation. We can reach these roots of these mighty tree agreements and stand at a point where we can uproot and let go of something very significant that is a sizable chunk of the consciousness of agreements. Such an overall convolution of agreements may not be very easy to represent in any particular way, and so it must present visually as something, and in this case, with this particular large consciousness agreement chunk to be faced, it would visually be that of this vast supermarket, and only the real awareness impressions would afford insight as to its overall representation. And indeed, it did seem this was rather a daunting overall agreement to release for the personal self, as I found myself trying to access this supermarket complex, but despite it seemingly being such that this shouldn't have been a problem, what with all the other supermarket complex dwellers and workers etc, I just couldn't seem to get in, as though it was there, but always curiously out of reach. Overall, this was something I was ready to release, that which this mega supermarket represented, but a little last moment personal self-reluctance, almost like a final personal self-protest which carried little weight, more a gesture really, and not even the personal self was very convincing as to its negating of this agreement releasing. For, of course, if the personal self adamantly clings to ideas, nothing can take these ideas from it, as we always decide our reality and our simulated experiences based on the ideas we agree with. But it's a little like overall deciding on a new diet, but a few final reservations, a few lingering wants to have that final pile of junk food, though without much by way of substance or any real conviction. And so, I would withdraw from this mega supermarket, realising that despite a few final reservations through the personal self, it was for the best, awareness, beneficial wise. Just then, a car would pull up beside me, and would be full of a personal self immersed, one dimensional, unconscious associates I had once known on the physical, as though they represented a further temptation to step back into a creation and the personal self. As always, as we proceed, we will have endless distractions and laws, a minefield of created ideas that if we cling to and agree with, we fall back into a creation accordingly. For, of course, the influence always operates through a consciousness, and its nature is to maintain individuals with agreement to the consciousness and creation. The influence's nature expresses through individuals creationally immersed, 
in this way that they become seducers, tapline agents. We are constantly allured and enticed and must maintain a steady and steadfast focus on the ears and our real purpose. And when we find ourselves in cars or any vehicles for that matter, these attend represent ideas, attitudes and aspects of the created personal self. For all ideas are really vehicles that when we place our agreement with, we are the effects of, and so we ought always be conscious of the ideas we are adopting, the attitudes we are assuming, the cars we find ourselves within, and this would extend to cars being driven by others also, that these vehicles then would represent their attitudes and personal self-consciousness of ideas and intent, and should we enter such vehicles and allow ourselves to be driven off, this would represent agreement with such individuals, and should they be one-dimensional, personal self-immersed only people, we are then very much embroiling ourselves in cause and effect creation accordingly, which would not be beneficial where our process of awareness is concerned, but it would depend on who was operating the cars, for were Duane or the guides behind the wheel, then agreements with individuals that stand real with the ears would be somewhat different than agreement placed with the unconscious unaware, and depending on who is driving determines who is rather in agreement with or following whom, and so if we were in a car with the unconscious unaware, if we are driving, this would represent we are not in a complete agreement with them and following their ideas, although association with such individuals of sitting in the car with them would represent an aligning of certain ideas that the vehicle represented, as despite us being at the wheel, we are driving in the same car and heading for the same destination. If we share ideas, we share the effects, and the ideas of the unconscious unaware will be very much creationally orientated. And a few real side experiences I have had, where I am at the wheel, a one-dimensional person is in the car, but it's as though I am driving them to where they can experience something that will benefit them awareness speaking, that they are in agreement with the beneficial idea represented by the car we both share, and if they are not prepared to go as far as I will take them, they tend to fade from the car at a certain point. So there is much by way of viewpoints and representations as it pertains to cars, with who happens to be in them, who is at the wheel, etc. On this occasion, I would decline their offer of a car journey, 
as this was a clear representation of the law of the unconscious unaware and of creation generally, and would respectively decline, and off they would go into whatever experience they have creationally projected for themselves, but I would not accompany them there. It was interesting that, yes, I had decided to release a major consciousness agreement chunk, but it had rather been quite a seeming ordeal for it to be so, as though rather traumatic for the personal self, though it had overall agreed to do this, but was a somewhat out of sorts accordingly. I would experience this as a feeling of dizziness, being a light-headed and shaking uncontrollably, as though I was having withdrawal symptoms. In a way, I suppose I was. The releasing of something major agreement-wise that had grown and become more and more convoluted over the lifetimes, to the point that to release it was quite a monumental thing, and very unsettling for the personal self, like being deprived of something you have held dear to for eons. Very often, when the personal self is a little overwhelmed, emotionally reactive or unsettled. We are automatically then removed from our real awareness, nowness position, as we activate ideas through the personal self. The real awareness is where our protection is assured, as the real awareness, if stood in completely, can always operate in ways that make the most sense with life and in protection of its personal self, as it knows just what to do and how to draw upon whatever is required for survival. The personal self can only draw upon what it knows, has learned, and the skills it has that are current with experiences, references from the present lifetime, and so is more limited and more vulnerable. So in situations such as this, where something has rather knocked me from my kilter, and I am then very much sat in the personal self, absent then of all that the real awareness can bring to bear to deal with any and all situations as it can when we stand in the nowness reality of it, so I find that if it isn't a situation where I am consciously indulging the personal self and then rather have to deal with what transpires consequently, if it is an unsettling personal self-reaction to what are parts of our overall awareness process, and indeed then a possible expected and understandable reaction, so the guides very often will step in and rather stand as though as guards around me, to ensure I am not harassed or attacked by anyone taking this opportunity to attack one made more vulnerable through standing in their personal self. For despite this personal self immersed reactionary position, my open agreement 
with the guides is maintained, so they can always feature in my experience, regardless of if the experiences stem from personal self-activation or not. They will decide when and if they feature, and this was another occasion where they deemed it a necessity. As I sat there, rather shaking all over, and as I said, it was like I was in the grips of a severe ailment, or had withdrawal symptoms. And not only were several individuals then present, that my impressions would eventually afford me were the guides, but Duane also was there. My discernment of them would be initially absent, as my real awareness nowness that can read the reality of anything visually presented I was removed from, as I was rather encased in my personal self at that moment, but their actions surely revealed them as to who they were, as they stood quite clearly in a protective capacity, and would state also this was what they were doing. One of them was in the form of my father, and often this is a form very commonly adopted by real guides in my experiences, and is a common occurrence for many, where the guides take on the outward form of older siblings or parental figures. As for Duane, his body form was very powerful in its build, like that you might see with a superhero caricature. His face was somewhat different appearance-wise, but I just knew it was him, and indeed, as I began to rather regain my composure, the impressions as they began to seep in, as I allowed then that the real awareness could provide them, did confirm these as guides, and the individual I felt was a Duane was indeed so. So this verifies again that as we support and promote the guides and Duane, they also support us, as we all support each other on our awareness processes. And that Duane and the guides, the real guides and not the faked ones, when you encounter the genuine ones, there is this standing and sincerity is undeniable as they have a presence, an essence about them, that is read through the real awareness, that can't be faked. It is a remarkable sense of a being, that you only can have, if you recognise and stand real with the ears, as the guides and Duane do. And then... Duane would present me with a large piece of a paper which was completely blank, and my impressions were that this represented the successful completion of the expelling and releasing of this very substantial part of the consciousness of agreements, that yes, there is more of the personal self to face, but in regards to this particular part of the consciousness, the letting of it go was complete. Interestingly, as I considered vaguely the ideas of that 
which I had released, some faint markings began to form on the paper, as though representing always the potentiality of re-establishing that which had been released. For as readily as we let tap lines go, we can just as easily reapply them if we so decide, so even with the tap lines faced and released, we must be cautious that the ideas they represented don't pull us in again. And these faint markings never became substantial by any degree in this moment. They faded away, and the sheet of paper was a blank once again. And in regards to this particular significant consciousness overall agreement idea piece released, if the sheet of paper remained blank would be up to me, and to maintain the disassociation from this particular agreement. And so the process would continue as long as my intent for it to be is perpetuated, and the real side experiences will express in whatever ways they do, simulated ways, in regards to these tapline identifying and releasing situations, as experiences are as unique as the individuals that have them. Well, that's terrific, Kevin. Yes, yeah, so verification for you and everything you've gone through. And uh, yeah, that's the fun part, isn't it? So yes, thank you so much for sharing. That's so cool.